during the 19th century. So in fact, the principal author of this new graph is Dr. Michael Mann. He says the graph is based on computer simulations of the temperature series of the last 140 years compared to old tree ring data. How likely is it that there was a year as warm as 1998 or a decade as warm as the 1990s in the past thousand years given this reconstruction? And it turns out that when you ask that question, the answer that you get is that it's 95% to 99% likely. That essentially underlies the, uh, the conclusion of the IPCC that the 1990s and 1998 were very likely the warmest decade and the warmest year in the past thousand years. The official view coming from the IPCC is that the man hockey stick curve represents the temperature over the last thousand years. The problem with that is that one of the authors on that chapter is Michael Mann himself. It makes you believe that in particular that the climate view is held by many. In fact, it's really held by few. Michael Mann's hockey stick graph is unusual and scientists not attached to the United Nations Climate Panel have found it hard to swallow. They include Sally Balunas and her colleague Willie Soon from Harvard. If you look at the hockey stick, uh, the strong rise in the 20th century is meant to say that the 20th century is unusually warm and because that's the period where carbon dioxide has been put in the air, especially in the late part of the 20th century, that therefore the warming of the 20th century is unnatural. In other words, man-made. Dr. Sally Balunas is staff astrophysicist at the Harvard-Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory and regarded as one of America's preeminent women scientists. Her colleague, Dr. Willie Soon, is an expert on the climatic history of the past and on computer modeling. The two find it hard to reconcile themselves to Dr. Michael Mann's sudden abolition of the medieval warm period and the Little Ice Age. Say, Willie. Okay. You coming in? Uh, yeah. Where's that Linsen paper on the Hadley okay. cell situation? Let me go and get it for you. Soon and Balunas say that the hockey stick graph is an inaccurate picture of the climate because it presents the 20th century as the warmest period on Earth in modern times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sally Balunas and Willie Soon have sifted through enormous quantities of scientific articles, providing indications of the climate in the past from various regions across the world. Well, this is about under minimum, so let me go and put this. The most pressing question was to see whether the medieval warm period and the Little Ice Age were global phenomena. Now, how do you uncover past climate? We have to rely on signatures of climate, fingerprints called proxies. That is something in the environment that's sensing what the past temperature or rainfall was like. You can look at bogs, for example, and find information that says in the past it was warmer in some regions because there are particular insects or pollen there that doesn't appear during cold times. You can look at ice cores and make a chemical measurement that relates to what the temperature was going back in the past. You can look at tree growth or coral growth. There's information there. So like forensic detectives, these proxy experts can go in and look and reconstruct the past climate for that area. See this one? Mm -hmm, show mm -hmm. you one? Oh yeah, well he agrees with us. He's in total agreement with us, isn't he? Our work, I think, has only re-verified what many of the proxy workers had done. We, after all, didn't do new proxy work. We just accumulated as much as we could. And most of the papers we took came after the latest United Nations report with the hockey stick in it. Yeah, their calibration actually is not that good, actually. Okay. With the three ring index. It's so hard. Oh, no, here's another trick here. If you look at this one. This one is unbelievable. No one wants to catch this. this is so we asked when a researcher had a record of past environment change, was there in that record a change that was very significant, very extreme from 800 to 1300 AD during the medieval warm period? And then did the opposite extreme occur during the Little Ice Age? And then we asked a third question, was the 20th century the most extreme in that record that those expert researchers had developed? 
This is why this curve kind of looked like a flag. When we added up all the information from across the globe, from the Arctic to Antarctica, on every continent, we found that, yes, there was a medieval warm period, warmer than today. Yes, there was a little ice age that was extremely severe and cold, and the 20th century was not unusual. The Earth's atmosphere is the cause of all life on the planet. Without this thin membrane separating us from the cold darkness of space, life on Earth as we know it would be impossible. The greenhouse gases like water vapor, clouds and CO2 retain the heat radiation beamed down to us by the sun. Without these gases, the sun's rays would merely be reflected into space and the globe would be cold and uninhabitable. The phenomenon we benefit from is known as the natural greenhouse effect. The sun delivers the main amount of energy to the climate of the Earth. And Earth, the, air, the atmosphere of the Earth, has a greenhouse effect in it, a natural greenhouse effect, that keeps the Earth a bit warmer than it would be if these gases weren't there. The foremost of them is water vapor. Water vapor is the most important of the greenhouse gases. Second in line is the effect of water in clouds, water droplets and water dry ice crystals. So the natural greenhouse effect has made the Earth warmer and much more pleasant for life on it. According to the human greenhouse effect theory, the natural greenhouse effect is amplified because the CO2 we emit makes the heat blanket around the globe thicker and hence it retains more heat resulting in increased temperatures. Now because carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas there is concern and it's quite correct to be concerned about whether or not that will enhance the natural greenhouse effect on the earth and will it then cause catastrophic climate change to the earth. It's very difficult to figure that out by looking at climate simulations, computer simulations done of climate because they are so complex and right now the science is in its infancy. But you can ask what has been happening to climate as carbon dioxide has been building up in the air and then give an expectation for the future. The 20th century uh, shows a pattern of warming early in the century that can't be related to the increase of greenhouse gases in the air. So up until about 1940, it's warming, unrelated to carbon dioxide. Then there's a cooling or a flattening of the temperature. That can't be, that you can't be getting a cooling from increasing carbon dioxide. And then there's the warming at the end of the 20th century. Now, since most of the greenhouse gases from human actions have been put in the air in the latter part of the 20th century, we really can divide the century in half and look at the first half and say, those changes must be natural. So you can't look at the 20th century directly and say, all the warming of the 20th century must be from greenhouse gases. Only the warming at the last part of the 20th century might be from greenhouse gases. The message from the first climate conference in Rio in 1991 was loud and clear. Man is responsible for the global warming of the last 100 years. Today, it is generally recognized that most of that warming is due to natural climatic change. And indeed, the United Nations Climate Panel has modified its original statements. In its latest report, published in 2001, it says that only the warming of the last 30 years is due to human activity. But even this claim is disputed by one of the leading atmospheric physicists, Professor John Christie of the University of Alabama, Huntsville. He doesn't think that CO2 has the disastrous effect on the climate predicted by the computer models. He says something is going on in the atmosphere that we do not yet understand. The natural world has a great capacity to relinquish the heat that carbon dioxide wants to trap, but is unable to because of so many processes in the natural world that allow the heat to escape. And so the world has many ways in which it tries to keep a balance and has many avenues to do that with. And one of them is to let the heat escape more rapidly to space and not build up in the atmosphere. John Christie says the increased quantities of CO2 in the atmosphere 
may not intensify the greenhouse effect because, with the help of satellites, he has made an important discovery.